not too long ago i made a video talking about the nairobi city thunder the recent signings they made prior to the bal tipping off and in this video i'll talk about another different angle that i don't think a lot of people have been talking about and without further ado let's just get into it. but before we, before that man i love the support you're showing me on this channel and be sure to like share subscribe to the channel helps me out a ton the goal is to hit 10,000 subscribers it's a crazy goal it's my goal but with your help we'll be able to get there so without further ado let's just get into it so the nairobi city thunder they have been a team that has shown dominance when it comes to kenyan basketball they are a team that i don't think anyone in kenyan basketball can be able to beat them because they swept every single team in the 254 so with their 2020 their 2023 2024 season Run it, it capped off an unbeaten season, 22 and 0 in the regular season, and they swept every single team in the postseason. So they never lost a single game in Kenyan soil. Even with the Cobra Sport team coming to Kenya, they were still dominant and able to still take up take them apart. I know they played against the Phenomenal Phenoms earlier this year, but I'm not gonna count that because the Phenomenal Phenoms team it had. 80% of Kenyan players so it was just a whitewash it was not even it was no contest and everyone knew that the Nervous Heath are not gonna win that matchup so there's another angle that I've seen uh, happening especially in the lead up to the road to ball campaign which is slated to tip off in nine days so it's gonna start October 8th and prior to that we'll know what type <clears throat> what group the NRBC Thunder will be and the type of team that they're going to match up with. So there are so many champions in Africa. So you're going to see who the NRBC Thunder are going to play soon. And I'll make a video dropping. I'll drop a video talking about that. And I will talk about that one at that time. So the NRBC Thunder are using a playbook that I've seen that the Kenya Morans use. So... The Kenya Morans, as they are preparing for their continental assignments, dating back from uh, last year, 2023, when they played in the Afrochan, we saw them play a bunch of teams, and those teams were constructed that time the Kenya Morans were playing. So that was uh, something that I was keenly observing, and those games did not even show an accurate depiction of what the Kenya Morans are going to expect. So I know a lot of subscribers, a lot of followers or new listeners are going to listen to this and ask, Dirt, where are you getting to? Uh, can you please uh, tell us? Uh, what are you trying to communicate? So this is what I'm trying to say. The Kenya Morans, they picked teams and, and, they, and, they, and, they, and, they, and they made sure to uh, look for teams that don't exist. And use them as sparring partners for them to be able to participate and be able to show what they are going to be able to do not even participate because participate that's something that they do but they, they were showing uh, what they have been doing in training camp and the teams that they were getting as uh, their sparring partners in lead up to these continental assignments were not the best teams that showed what can happen when they're pushed to the limit because when you're seeing uh, a team conceding north of 80 70 points uh, although although the other team let's say the Kenya Morans in this case we are talking they won those games it painted a huge red flag because the defense was off and chemistry still wasn't there and fast forward to even what we saw earlier this year with our national team it was the same script we used and it yielded the same results as last year so you might be wondering why are they, these things related to the Nairobi City Thunder. So the Nairobi City Thunder has 80% of the Kenya Morans players, players who actively play for that team. And if you look at that roster, even with their six signings, you will know that a couple of players are going to get dropped. And even the teams that they have been playing, they play against the Kenya All-Stars and they play against the South Sudan elite local based players, so the Nairobi based players. So those games, the Nairobi City Thunder won. And those are games that were just confidence boosters, trying to show that 
they can be able to uh, mix it up and be able to uh, work in tandem. But they don't really expose any any wrong or any flaws with the Nairobi City Thunder. And being a team of the Nairobi City Thunder's caliber, you would expect after they have beaten every single Kenyan team, they are, they are, their sights are supposed to be set at, okay, let's look for good matchups in East Africa. Let's go to Tanzania. Let's go to Uganda. Let's go to Rwanda. Let's go to Burundi. Let's see what team is available for us to play with. What, what team can we go ahead and uh, just test our eye on with? Uh, what team is available f- that can assist us to, to be able to uh, play well in the road to ball campaign and can even show us our strengths and weaknesses? So instead of you know testing and making sure that we can be able to do, they can be able to do that. Instead, they opt for inferior teams and inferior matchups. I'm not saying that these teams are inferior like that, but we've already seen what the NBC Thunder are capable of in Kenyan soil and they'll be able to dominate. And these games, these two games that they have played, gives them a false sense of security that I feel like is going to backfire on them spectacularly. And in a couple of uh, posts that are made on uh, NBA Kenya's Instagram, which is uh, another a place that you need to follow so that you can get real-time updates on what I'm thinking. A lot of people are waking up to the reality of the Nairobi City Thunder. And their clock bubble is about to bust because even on yesterday, even with their gate prices they were charging, they didn't sell out the Nyayo Gym. And actually, the Nyayo Gym is very small. And if they really, really have a lot of fans like that, they should have even going, been getting bigger venues like the, 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 like the Kasrani Stadium. They should be getting that, but it is what it is. So that's not the topic of this video. We're just talking about their preparation for the road to ball. So the road to ball gauntlet is something is a competition that enables the team to be able to get to the BAL, and it's a gauntlet. And the Nervous City Thunder have to start from the beginning. They have to start from the first round. They have to finish top two, make it to the Elite Sixteen, uh, then get to the knockout phase. In the semis and finals luckily enough they, if you can be able to make the finals they'll get an automatic uh road to uh, ball bath road they, after out of the road to ball them they'll make it to the bl even if they finish one one or two even the objective is to get a spot or even three so the nervous thunder are making a huge mistake by you know using these ego matchups these games as ego boosters because they are not exposing what they need to fix. I know they are working on the team chemistry because they've added six new players onto that team, which I feel is very dangerous. And a couple of players you're not going to see uh, play because I'm, in, in prior to this tournament, you're also going to see the final list that the Nairobi City Thunder is going to present to FIBA so that they can be able to compete. So that's something that I'll also be updating you on. And it will give us the whole truth because... The Nairobi City Thunder, the new signings automatically are going to be there because it wouldn't make any sense for the Thunder to go ahead and sign new players and have them not compete. So a couple of local based players are going to get cut and expect that, which is inevitable with any uh, roster constructions. So that is not something that should come as come out as a surprise. So the Thunder, their matchmaking has been very poor. Even with their dominant, they they look, their quote-unquote dominant performances, which are very questionable because they're just uh, a team that is so powerful, better than even any other team that can be assembled, and the other teams just look inferior, and they just look like a superior team. And in those matchups, they're going to win them eventually. So even when they they, they tell you, hey, look, we're going to match up against this team, it's, it's, it's not going to test them at all. And also, you could even see what the South Sudanese team did. I'm not talking about the local base players. I'm talking about the South Sudanese team, Royal Ivy Lowell Deng team, as they prepared for the Olympics. So the Olympics that ha- happened about a month, a month ago was one of those tournaments that was worldwide, and they had to prepare well. So what did they actually do? They went... And matched up against teams all over the continent. They went um, played. They played Argentina, they played Portugal, they played Great Britain, 
and they also played Team USA in an exhibition game. So you could see those are four quality matchups that the South Sudanese team played. And you can see out of those four matchups, they had a record of two and two. So the fear of the NRC Thunder to lose a game because at some point they are very overconfident even with how they approach things will be their greatest demise because it doesn't matter if you win or lose even in an exhibition game. It's a matter of did you play your best game because these Kenyan games, these games that you're playing here won't tell you the whole truth. And if the NRC Thunder think that training in the Nyayo gym is going to prepare them for the road to Bal. That means that they have not learned from the mistakes of KPA and Ulinzi. So it's very unfortunate that we have uh, organizations that are unwilling to look for those matchups because they want to protect their ego and image. That is something that I've seen. And right now, even if you call for them to be able to go ahead and look for a good quality matchup, it's too late because they have less than a week to be able to uh, set up a way that they can be able to play. They have less than a week. So majority of, the, of this week, it will be all hands on deck on their side. And it, just, it can count as a missed opportunity because they did poor matchmaking. So I'm not that impressed with these two games that they have played. I don't think they add any, they, they push the needle like, like that. I don't think these are games that you even, should even take seriously because they are not that serious. I mean, these are games that... They, we already know the outcome, even after they announced it. They said they're going to play against the Kenya All-Stars. That, that game, everybody knew uh, what was going to happen. I'm not going to go in-depth on those two games because I feel like it doesn't make any sense and it, it will just waste time because we all know uh, who was going to come out the winner. And those games, another red flag I saw was those games, that scoring was they were blowouts. And you could see the points that the Thunder conceded. I'm not saying that they are supposed to uh, stop every single shot attempt. But to show, even if you show dominance like that, look at the type of opposition you're playing. You can't play tomato cans and uh, heavy, you get a heavy bag team that you can just punch around. Then you say that you're the best. You know, it's no disrespect to what the Thunder did, but... If, if being the kings of Kenyan basketball was the goal, they already achieved it. Now they are trying to conquer the continent, which is so difficult because the teams that you're going to play, they are champions in their own nations. So it's very difficult to just try to say that just because you sign these six new players, they're going to guarantee you a road to ball spot. And I even went on record saying in a couple of uh, posts not too long ago, I said, if the Thunder don't make the BAL, this will count as one of the one of the failed seasons that they are going to have, and it's just going to water down all the investment they have put in, because you can't pay players like that. Uh, you can't be extravagant in paying players like that just to lose in the BAL in, in the road to ball. You didn't even make the BAL, and it's it, 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 and there's levels to this because you can even play in the road to ball and win it. And when you get to the BAL, the regular season, you have to make sure that you win so that you can get to the playoffs. And you get to the playoffs, make sure you, you, make sure you get to either the semis or finals, which is going to be very difficult for a first-timer team. I know a lot of t- other teams have been able to win it from the first swoop, like Alali. Uh, but K- Kenya, the NRBC Thunder are not on that level yet because North, Af- not, North African team run Kenyan basketball. So if they're going to get to that level, that means they have to go through U.S. Monastir. They have to go to. They have, they have to go through all those teams. They have to go against Petro de Luanda at some point if they if they meet in the, in the playoffs. So it's going to be a difficult matchup, and even geographically, you can see a place where the Nairobi City Thunder team can be can play is the Nile Conference, and who knows if they're going to be able to even get past those teams. So it's uh, it's very unfortunate that the Thunder did not get quality opposition. And it's very sad because as much as the Thunder wants to look good, at what cost? It can cost them a lot. And in this video, I just wanted to compare the preparation uh, deficit that is there. 
You look at how South Sudan, South Sudan are doing. Look at the resources that they have. If the NRBC Thunder have the resources to sign international players, why don't they use the same resources to get quality opposition in East Africa? I even mentioned Pazis there. You can go to Uganda. Look for a Ugandan team to play against. Look for a Tanzanian team to play against. Look for a Rwandese team you can play against. Go, go look for the BK Arena. You could have even re go and, went and leased there. You could have gone there and leased uh, to have some time slots. And, you know, pay for tickets. Go there, train to make sure that you're ready. Because training at Nairobi, Nyayo, is not enough. Nyayo is a very, is a, is a very outdated gym. And if you're, if you're using that or even using that court that you play at, it's just going to give you, you're not going to get enough service because you're not going to play in such, a, in such an environment. So it is what it is. So that's all I had to say about that. And uh, if you guys like the video, make sure you leave your feedback down in the comments what you think about this. I mean, the NRBC Thunder, they're a very interesting team. And I just said, I'll just drop a video talking about them. So like, share, subscribe to the channel. The goal is to hit 10,000 subscribers. With your help, I will get there. And... Um, I'm out. I'm going to talk to you guys in the next one. Peace out.